right, so this is homework 2B, evaluating limits analytically, basic. Uh, number one is negative two, number two is negative four, three is zero, four is negative five. Five. Number five, square root of negative six. Anybody have a decimal uh, approximation on that? Mm -mm. Square root, oh, well you probably just plugged it in, right? Square root of, that's what I meant. The negative square root of six. Uh, if you just plugged it in, that's fine, Mary. Six, the answer is two. Seven, negative two thirds, or the decimal equivalent, negative point six six seven. Eight, negative one six. Anybody have the decimal approximation on that? Negative point one. Eight something maybe. Number nine, the answer is negative one, and number ten, the answer is negative one. So remember the way that we're scoring these: uh, one x if it's wrong, two x's if you didn't do it. Okay, shame on you. Not too much shame. Uh, at the top of the page, I want to see how many you missed. Maybe you missed two. Maybe you missed one. Maybe you missed none. There's ten questions. That means there's a total of twenty points possible. This person would have an eighteen out of twenty for a ninety percent. I also want to see that percent. Uh, you, uh, as always, remember you can grab one of these calculators up here at the front um, and utilize that during class. Did anybody need to see any of those again? All right, and I'm going to close the window for them. All right, we are going to continue our notes. I know I uh, handed out the homework yesterday, but um, you weren't able to solve every single one of those problems. So let's talk about how to solve some different types of problems now. Oh, there we go. Um, let's talk about, uh, let's see, we've got piecewise functions and we have uh, some algebraic functions. Y'all are probably very concerned about the piecewise functions, those at the beginning of, of the homework, so let's look at, at those. So uh, on your notes, let's just talk about piecewise functions and what those actually mean, okay? And we'll go ahead and we'll figure out how to graph piecewise functions on decimals. How does that sound? I think that'd be advantageous. Okay, so I'm going to uh, show uh, a graph here and we'll say, uh, I'll write it in a weird way. Um, for f of x. So here's the f of x definition. If the x value is greater than or equal to 3, then f of x equals 5. If x is less than 3, then f of x equals 4. Um, can y'all read an if-then statement? Sure, of course you can. If x is greater than or equal to 3, so that means from this point here onward to the right, then 
f of x equals 5. Then the y value is going to equal 5. So that means that our graph at x equals 4 is going to be 5. At x equals 5 is going to be 5. x equals 77 is going to be 5, right? And every spot in between those, so we're going to have a graph that's going to look like that. This right here says if x is less than 3, so that means from this point on the graph over to the left, then f of x is equal to 4. So that means when x equals 2, what's our y value, ladies? 4. four. When x is 1, our y value is? When x is 0, our y value is? Four. Negative 10? Four. Okay. All right, so we've definitely got something going this way. Um, what about 2.5? 2.9. Four. 2.99. 2.999. So I want to try to get this going all the way to here, but I don't actually want to. I'm not actually going to put a dot there at 3 because the dot is up there at, at, um, at the y value of 5. So I'll put an open circle right there. So far so good? All right. Now, for whatever reason, mathematicians do not um, write piecewise functions in this manner. They just reverse everything. Okay? So if you were to see the way that this is actually written, this is how they write it. f of x equals, and then they have a little bracket here, and then they'll, they'll, they'll go in order from the left situation to the right situation, okay? So they'll say it equals 4 comma when x is less than 3, and they'll say it equals 5 when x is greater than or equal to 3. So, okay, understandably, they start over, they, they kind of start from like the negative infinity region. They start from, they come this way, and but they put the y value and then they put the condition. Does that make sense? put the y value in the condition and so on. So it's literally just, they put the if part last. Um, so that's why sometimes when I see the comma, then I'll say uh, when. f of x equals four when x less than three, f of x equals five when x is greater than or equal to three. All right? Um, well, shoot, let's just run the whole story on this one, shall we? Let's do some limit analysis on this problem, okay? So uh, there's some easy limit questions we could ask, and there's some hard limit questions we could ask. An easy limit question would be at any one of these areas, okay? Or any one of these areas over here. For example, here's some, here's some easy limit questions. What is the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 1? Why, yes, you're right. Why is it 4? Because it's not very good. Oh, we're going to that good. <laughs> yeah, as, as, if we look at the area, if we zoom in around the area where x equals negative 1, and we're looking at these values, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, you know, we're definitely approaching 4, and we're definitely approaching 4 from that direction, right? So it's, it's pretty obvious. So that's really not a very difficult problem. What about the limit of f of x as x approaches, oh, I don't know, 7? Yeah, it's going to be 5. Because 7 is, is you know, way over here, and it's, you know, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. It's always, it's always 5 in that region, OK? So it's pretty straightforward. It, you just look at this number right here and see which of those two situations it is, and then you just do direct substitution. Okay? Which we all like direct substitution, because how do we do on that homework there, ladies? Pretty good? 
Missy, I can see it's got a blank look there. No. Oh, well, you know, no one's oh, perfect. Not, the homework was corrected for me. Wait, you said that. Oh, no, 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 no. The number eight, I got it wrong. Mm. Should have erased the other one. All right. So, that, uh, uh, so well, that's the easy problems for piecewise functions, okay? Doing the limit in one of those other, one of those areas where the, the, the function is continuous because you literally just do direct substitution. It gets to be kind of tricky when we want to talk about the limit right here. But does it really get that tricky? What is the limit as x approaches three of f of x? He says does not exist. Well, let's, we're zooming in on this area. Da, 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 four, 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 four. Definitely seems to be approaching four from the left, right? What about from the right? Five, 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 five. Seems to be approaching five. Mm -hmm. So we're approaching two separate things. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the limit of f of x as x, as x approaches three is, mm -hmm. does not exist. Now I could try to be sort of sneaky and I could give you a problem like this. What is the limit of f of x as x approaches three from the right? So we'll put a little plus right there. Well, Mr. Goddard, you're gonna have to do better than that if you're gonna be sneaky on us, right? Because when it says three from the plus, that means approaching it from the right. What are we approaching here? What y value are we approaching? Five. Five. Similarly, the limit of f of x as x approaches three from the left. Go ahead and say it all together. Four. Four. Okay. Well, that's all really nice and good. Um, one question is, could we do this sort of analysis right here without the graph? It's always easier with the graph. And you're gonna have to on this one, okay? Unless you figure out how to graph it on Desmos, which I'll show you here in a minute, all right? Um, but let's just think about this, okay? What if I didn't have the graph? Mm -hmm. And I didn't have this nice Mr. Goddard way of writing everything. I just had that function rule. And I said, what is the limit of f of x as x approaches negative one? Well, you'd say, I don't know. Let's see what the function is doing around negative one. Well, negative one, is uh, less than three. So the function is gonna be acting like this, right? Mm -hmm. So in reality, this problem right here, limit of f of x, x for negative one, is really could be right. What is uh, the limit as x approaches negative one of four? You know, and the answer is four. When I talk about this one, what is the limit of f of x as x approaches seven, you say, well, which one of those situations is it? Well, it's x seven is greater than three, so it's going to, it's, so it's following this function rule right here, okay? So the answer is five. And then, how would I figure out this one? What is the limit of f of x as x approaches three? Well, we look at this one and we say, ah, three is the, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say critical point, because critical point is a technical calculus term that we're gonna talk about in our chapter five. But I would say, well, uh, Three is kind of weird because I guess it act, it's acting like this before three and it's acting like this after three. Let me plug it all in and see what they see what it looks like and see if they see if they're lining up on the same way. And, it's, and the thing is, is that they're not. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and try that. Now these are this is this is cake. This is level one, right? Those are just linear. Or sorry, those are constant. Let's try. Um, a function that has a linear on both pieces. In other
another word. I'll draw it over here. So you don't need to sketch it. But we're going to do something where. Come on, Mr. Fellows here. I'll pick, say, maybe, you know, at five. At five, it's going to be, you know, less than five. It's going to be something kind of like that. Um, some line with a negative slope, okay? But then after five, it's going to be something with a positive slope, okay? We're going to do something kind of like that. So here we go, piecewise function, f of x equals, nice little bracket, negative uh, 2x plus 10 when x is less than or equal to 5, and it equals 3x minus 20 when x is greater than 5. All right, so let's do some limit problems on that. So what is the limit of f of x as x approaches, oh, I don't know, negative 2? All right. Now, Kirsten, when x is approaching negative 2, which of these two situations am I in? Situation 1 or situation 2? Situation 1? You're right, because negative 2 is kind of in the less than 5 region, right? So guess what? I just do direct substitution right into there. Do you see what I'm... Can you visualize, can you see this function kind of in your head, negative 2x plus 10? It's a y equals mx plus b type of a thing. It's got a negative slope, it's got a y-intercept of 10, right? So this is going to be, if you want to expand it out, you know, you could say this is f of x in this region right here follows the negative 2x plus 10 formula. So that's just going to be negative 2 times negative 2 plus 10. So that's 4 plus 10. I come up with 14. You guys see we good on that? Yeah. Alright. Sarah, limit of f of x as x approaches 9. Which one of those two regions are we in? Three up there. We're in this region right here. So we can just do direct substitution. Um, I'll, I'll, write, I'll write it out here just like I did the previous one, just for uh, consistency. So in, in this region right here, f of x is following that function rule. So um, at this point, Direct substitution is our friend, nothing tricky. So that's just going to be 3 times 9 minus 20. So 27 minus 20 is 7. Now for the real tricky one. What is the limit of f of x as x approaches 5? And the reason why this is tricky is because what this is asking, this is asking what is the function approaching, you know, from the left and from the right. And it's tricky because it's fall, the function is following this formula when we're approaching from the left, and it's following this formula when we're approaching it from the right. Okay? And so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to plug 5 in to this one and see what it's approaching from the left. And we're going to have to plug 5 in to this formula to see what's approaching from the right. And we're going to see if they are both, if they are both approaching the same number. OK? So I'll say it one more time. We're going to plug 5 in on the left-hand side to see what we're approaching. Plug 5 in to the right-hand side approaching. And we're going to see if it's approaching the same number. So I'll make a little note here. Uh, so I can't really even answer this until I do this little side problem. Uh, so from the left, the 
limit of f of x as x approaches 5 and applicable minus from the left is this right here, negative 2x plus 10. So negative 2 times 5 plus 10. So looks like that's negative 10 plus so 0. Seems to be approaching 0. From the right, limit of f of x as x approaches 5 from the plus. That's kind of a weird way of saying it, but anyway, we have we are following this formula. 3x minus 20, so 3 times 5 minus 20, so 15 minus 20 is a negative 5. Speak up a little bit. Exactly. Ding, ding, ding. It does not exist because from the left and from the right, the function is approaching two separate numbers. Okay? Now, let's go ahead and go to uh, Desmos. Feel free to pull up your uh, computer if you want to, so you can follow along. Uh, we might need to angle that a little bit. All right, are you ready? Now this is kind of weird. I'm gonna have to adjust this. So this is how you do piecewise. Negative two x plus ten. Negative two x plus ten. X is greater than five. Three x minus one. There we go. So I had to. The way you do this is you have to kind of list it all out and it's kind of messy, but it's also kind of nice because the if part comes first. So you say f of x equals open squiggle bracket, and then you put your condition, x less than or equal to 5, and what's really cool is if you, if you do less than or equal to, how do you do less than or equal to? You do x less than, and then you put equals, and then it, kind of, it figures it out. All right, so that's pretty neat. And then you put a colon, which I, th I think it kind of I kind of like because it says like the function is x uh, less than or equal to five, or, or, or sorry, if f x less than or equal to five, then it's negative two x plus ten. Um, and when x is greater than five, the function is three x minus one. Okay, and. Uh, Oh, isn't it nice? Isn't that kind of what you had in your head? Kind of, sort of? Something with a negative slope here, something with a positive slope here. We saw that from the left, as x approaches 5, uh, our function was approaching 0. Hitting 0. And then from the right, it was approaching negative 5. So you can see right down there, we were approaching Right there, all right. Approaching negative five. Okay. Any questions on piecewise functions? Um, so let's look at your uh, problem number one, shall we? Let's 
do, uh, what do you say we do one, of, we, let's do number one without Desmos, and then we'll do number three with Desmos. How's that sound? Okay. I didn't make it very easy for you on number one. I picked uh, the pivot point. You see that? What is the limit of f of x as x approaches three? And you're like, oh, three is the exact point where everything changes, right? So much drama. All right, well, we got to figure it out, all right? So in order to do this, we have to split it up into from the left and from the right, okay? So let's do the, the left. So the limit of f of x as x approaches 3 from the left, Mitzi, what formula is it going to follow? The top one, yeah. So equals, uh, well, let's just, can we just plug it in? Can we just say negative 2 times 3 plus 1? So negative 6 plus 1, negative 5. And the limit of f of x as x approaches 3 from the right, which formula is it going to follow, Robert? The bottom one. The bottom one? The bottom one. So negative, don't put the 3 in the parentheses there, negative 3 squared. It's just, technically it's a 3 squared and it's a negative out front. So then 2 times 3 minus 2. So we have that's negative 9 plus 6 minus 2. So negative 5. Whoa. It's approaching the same thing from both sides. What does that tell us? Yeah, it's, it's negative 5. The two side limit. This guy that's asking up here is negative five. I, try, I probably should write it as proper. That the limit of f of x as x approaches three equals five. So it's worked out now. That's for that problem right there. All right, and then, okay. Mitzi, I didn't think that was too difficult. Uh, whatever term has the x squared, it's called the, 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 
the, the first term, the leading term, you look at its coefficient. In this case, you can't see a coefficient because it's one, and but we, we don't write a one, but, but there is a one there, it's kind of invisible, it's understood, and it's positive, and it has a positive leading coefficient, it's gonna open upward, okay. up like a cup. If it's negative, down like a crown. I pull the mask down to make sure you can see the, the visual faces there. So this function is going to look something, I mean, I don't really know, it's gonna look something kind of like this, okay? Um, except at an x value of three, there's a hole in the graph, okay? And at three, it's going to equal I don't know if it's I don't know if this is shifted up, down, or whether or not it's actually that, that that's still in the hole. I'm not exactly sure, but that's that's what this type of thing means. It means when x is not equal to three, we're following this all the time. It's real, real nice, you know, acting like that all the time. But on on day three, the purge, I don't know, something weird happens. They're acting like this. Then things are back to normal. Okay. So how do you evaluate the limit of this? Well, let's see if I'm nice to you or mean to you. Did I, I would be nice to you if I gave you a region that was over here or over here, in which case you just plug it in, right? But guess what I did? I'm interested in the point x equals three. Of course, right? That's the whole point here. So um, what I want to look at is what are we approaching? Well, you know, here's the thing. I'm actually being pretty nice to you because as we're coming along this way from negative territory, right? What function rule are we following? What equation are we following? The top one, right? So you could just, you know, if you're, if you're plugging it in, you just would plug it into x squared minus six x plus eight. If I'm, if I'm looking at the value that I'm approaching uh, as approaching three from the right, you know, kind of walking down here. I'm just walking along that parabola, plugging those values into x squared minus six x plus eight. So what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm trying, I'm looking to see what are we approaching. And the, and the value that I'm approaching on that parabola, okay, is literally whatever I would get when I were to plug three into this, okay? And who cares if the dot is up there? That's just sort of almost like a distractor. Yeah, the function value is up there, but remember, limits aren't asking what's the function value, limits are asking what are we approaching, okay? So, as it turns out, um, on both sides, I'm utilizing that formula, okay? So, I feel like I'm still kind of losing some of y'all here. So, let's, Let me just write it out so we're a really long way. So let's evaluate it like we did the previous one. What is the limit as x approaches three from the left? So da, 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 da. Sarah, which function rule am I following when I'm kind of on the left territory over here? Uh, the top function or the bottom function? Did you say top? Yeah, it's top because the only time I'm ever gonna be following this is when I'm actually at three. But what about as I'm approaching three from the left? I'm following this formula. So it's gonna be three squared plus six times three plus eight. So that's nine plus 18 plus eight. Oh, is there a minus there? Okay, sorry. So nine minus 18 is a negative nine, plus an eight is a negative one. Okay. Now, let's look at it as we're going this way. Now, when I say this, you'll be like, oh yeah, okay, uh, I get you, I'm familiar. So the limit as x approaches three from the right. Kirsten, as I'm approaching three from the right, which of those two formulas am I following? The top one or the bottom one? Okay, I'm sensing some hesitancy. Why are you kind of hesitant? I'm still a little confused. 
Okay. The question is, when I have the limit of f of x as x approaches 3 from the right. You see the graph, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm looking, if I want to find the value at 4 or at 3.5 or at 3.1, right? The graph is following this parabola, mm -hmm. okay? It's not following 3. Mm -hmm. It's following this formula, okay. right? So when I say, what is the limit of f of x? As x approaches 3 from the right, like what values am I, you know, I'm saying we're, we're plugging this in, right? So we're, we're following, uh, we're following that. So uh, what I'll do is I'll simply do a direct substitution of 3 into this. So what, that's 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 8. So 3 squared is 9 minus 6, 18. It's the exact same thing that I just did a second ago. Wait, wait, did you do the problem again? Yes, we did. <laughs> uh, I want you all to look at it. I want you to uh, give me a formulated question. We still got a few minutes left of this class. All right, we're talking about Sam. Okay, Sam went crazy on day three. Okay, but you're like, oh my gosh, at <coughs> home, you know, at home he was looking like this. It looked like he was approaching negative one, and at school it looked like he was approaching negative one, right? But on day three he did this. All right. Won the dance party. I don't know what it was. It did something totally, he's normally really super quiet, but here he did something really cool, all right? But the whole rest of his life, he was, you know, he was following this parabola. So when I say, what did it look like he was approaching? Like, what did it look like? Like, what was his trajectory? And you would say, well, he, he was following this. So I'm just gonna, uh, so in this region, he was approaching this following this function rule. And as we looked in this area right here, he was following that parabola, which was that function rule. And so from both a, both sides, he was approaching that value. Now it just so happens that that value is negative one, and my whole graph just went crazy or whatever. But anyway, he was approaching negative one from the left. He's approaching negative one from the right. So therefore, the limit of f of x as x approaches 3 is negative 1. See if that makes any sense. What questions do you all have on that one? Not a whole lot? Okay. Um, we probably, we probably have never never dealt with piecewise functions that look weird with this not equals business, right? That's okay. You can handle it. Um, you can definitely solve questions one through eight now, right? I wonder if Desmos has a not equal to thing. You think it does? Yeah. F of x equals when x I'm not seeing it. Uh, those are the two ways I know how to do not equals. But I'd have to, I'd have to Google. It. Um. Anyway, but I, I don't know. I, I don't want to. I don't want to. It's, it's, it's false, and then that you can find. Okay. So that'll give you the graph. The question still is, though, I mean, like, if I gave you that graph, would you be able to solve it? Why not? I mean, like, if I gave you that graph. All right, we're gonna, we got to finish this. Mitzi. Yes, sir. Four. Okay, what is the limit 
of this function as x approaches 4 from the left? What's it approaching? Yeah. Sarah, what is the limit of f of x as x approaches 4 from the right? What's that? 10. This is number Goddard. <laughs> so, class, what is the limit of f of x as x approaches 4? Ten. Ten, right? It's approaching the same thing on both sides, okay? Now, what if I put another little mystery dot right here? Ten, it's still ten. It's still ten. ten. It's still approaching ten, okay? So what if instead of giving you that graph, I gave you the equation for that graph? Ten. Uh, it's still ten. It's still ten, right? Okay, so that may, hopefully that kind of clears things up a little bit. All right. Um, so at this point, there's no homework due on Monday yet because we still need to show you the last two types of problems, okay? okay. All right. Yes. Did y'all y'all do it to be? We did. I for some reason number six. I don't know why. All right. Well, the question last time I can do this for you. Here.